from now. Good morning, everyone. This is a public meeting of the Indiana Arts Commission Advisory Review Panel, convened to review the <clears throat> FY24-25 Arts Organization Support Grant Program applications in budget category Tier E. Tier E applicants have a budget greater than 1.4 million. I am Maya Michelson, Executive Director of the Indiana Arts Commission, and I am serving as today's uh, review panel moderator. Today is April 24th, 2023, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and we are meeting online and streaming live for applicants and the public to observe. Just as a reminder, there is to be no contact between the panel and the audience about the disposition of applications reviewed today, either before, during, or after the panel meeting. This meeting will be recorded and be made available upon request. At this time, I will individually invite each of our panelists and then staff to introduce themselves. Panelists will state their name, occupation, where they're from, and staff will state their title and role. So we'll start with the panel first. I will introduce each of you by your first name so that you can share a bit about yourself, uh, including your location. Karen. Hello, everyone. I'm Karen Dahl Mills. I'm a professor of practice at the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs at Indiana University, and I'm in Bloomington, Indiana today. Ruby. Hello, hola. I'm Ruby Lopez Harper, uh, the executive director of the Craft Emergency Relief Fund, and I'm calling in today from the uh, lands of the Nakut Tank, uh, which is now uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. Thanks. Uh, Petronio. Oh, I think you're muted, Petronio. Oh, sorry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Petronio Bendito, an associate professor uh, at Purdue University, the Roof School of Design, Art and Performance. And uh, I'm also the program coordinator for the Visual Communication Design Program. Thanks. Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Gill Sheridan. I am a playwright, a playwright and a playwriting professor at Vassar College in Poughkeepsie, New York. That's where I am right now. And prior to this job, I ran the MFA playwriting program at Indiana University in Bloomington. So that's how I um, come to the state. Thank you, panelists. So let's move on to staff. Uh, Eric. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Ashby. I am the Grants and Research Manager for the Indianapolis or for the Indiana Arts Commission, coming to you from Indianapolis. And Paige. Hi, I'm Paige Sharp, uh, Deputy Director of Programs with the Indiana Arts Commission. Thanks, staff. So now we'll begin the panel review, and this is how the process will work. The panel will discuss each application and the assigned reader will provide a summary of their review before discussion moves on to the full panel. Once the panel has completed their discussion, they'll have the opportunity and we'll take a moment or two for them to update their scores. So to our panelists, I encourage you to be conversational in your discussion. Feel free to ask questions of one another and chime in when you have a thought to add. While we wanna be mindful of time and focus on the highlights, I'm also here to ensure the discussion includes each of the four evaluation criteria, organizational excellence, artistic quality, inclusion, diversity, equity, and access, and community engagement. Should any of our panelists have a conflict of interest with an application, they'll be placed in the waiting room until we're ready for the next application. And we do not have any conflicts of interest in this panel, so that will not be happening today. Any questions from our panelists before we begin? Okay, seeing none, we will move to our first uh, application. I think uh, we have seen that we in order and we'll start with which is Tarkington Theater. And Ruth, you are the reader for that. 
Thank you so much. Um, so I like to organize uh, my comments as well against the um, section. So starting with organizational excellence, I felt that the narrative that the applicant provided conveyed a demonstration of a strong demonstration of ability and capacity paired with realistic approaches and sensible tactics. And the use of data in the narrative added depth and context. The testimonials I also appreciated added additional nuance to the importance of this organization in the community. For the IDEA section, the selection process built on the foundation of centering marginalized groups of people is a strong demonstration of how DEIA is being operationalized by this applicant. I'm not sure that the financial return on the investment in DEIA centered um, show uh, a DEIA centered shows is really the best indicator of success. And I would have appreciated more information about how the work has strengthened the organization beyond its financial situation. And I also would have liked to have seen uh, racial indicators in their audience data that they shared in their narrative. And I do want to say I appreciate the use and distribution of free tickets. I would suggest they consider adding uh, data or adding detail if they have it on um, the redemption of those tickets, um, because I think that would have just created a more compelling narrative response and would have given a broader picture. For artistic quality, there's clearly qualified individuals leading the program. There's clarity in how shows are being selected um, and the information on how the performers and crew are selected or secured. Um, oh, I'm sorry, providing information on how the performers and crew are selected or secured would have made this response also a little more compelling and again would have just given a little additional depth for me. Uh, for community engagement, input tactics are pretty straightforward and aligned specifically to audience and experience. I'm curious if the organization has considered utilizing the survey to gauge gaps or success in its DEIA efforts. Um, are there opportunities for a dialogue or for more direct input by the community that would assist the organization in expanding its views or offerings? Uh, partnerships appear high level in terms of mutual benefit and more detail or specificity would have made this narrative response more compelling. Free access to productions may have other nuance or may not be fully participated in due to other barriers, which if these are being mitigated would have made this a stronger response. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. Um, now we'll open it up for feedback, comments from panelists. So just jump in, unmute yourself and jump in. I'll take that invitation. I appreciate Ruby's concise and, and thorough uh, evaluation. The only other thing I would add, at echoing some of your comments about the idea section, um, this was, a, a, I thought, a, a great example of how they're applying their inclusion, diversity, equity, access uh, principles on the stage. We don't see that very often. And they really made a point of saying, this is how we are applying this to the work that's happening on the stage. Tell us more about how it's applying, pulling through the entire organization. How's it pulling through the board? How's it pulling through the staff? How's it pulling, how is it changing your organizational culture? You are so on the right track with talking about what's happening on stage to get all the way there. Make sure you pull the thread all the way through. Hi, um, I um, I really um, appreciated that that this organization laid out their methodology for um, for understanding how to choose a season or their methodology for assessment. I was really interested in that. The one thing I wondered about, I had a question at the end around the community engagement, which was I wondered if. My sense is, is that they're 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 their engagement with the community feels very surface to me. Like I feel like they could go a little bit further in terms of really finding out what marginalized communities um, need in the community. I feel like they won't always they don't always necessarily share their needs on first engagement. And I just wondered if there could be a more concrete plan to engage those communities of artists and audience to be sure that they're actually serving their needs as opposed to um, as opposed to kind of um, maybe assuming what they might need. Any other comments, discussion on this application? 
All right, seeing and hearing none, I will give you a moment or two to update scores. And then I will just intuit magically uh, when that has happened, or <laughs> I don't want to rush. But maybe give me a thumbs up when you're when you're uh, good to move forward. Attorney, are you good to move? Or are you still working? All right, fantastic. All right, our next applicant is the Idle Jorg Museum of American Indians and Western Art. And Karen, you are the reader on that application. All right, thank you. So um, this is a newish museum founded in 1989, and uh, they purport to tell the stories of the people of North America in all their diversity and complexity. I was uh, heartened to read under the organizational excellence section about how in 2022, they began to really think about making space for native peoples to tell their own stories in the museum. Uh, so that we're not talking about um, visitors as spectators to a culture, but rather a culture putting, uh, doing the work of themselves being afforded an opportunity, I should say it that way, being afforded the opportunity to tell their own stories in a reasonable way. And I, I thought that their narrative and the way they described how that process was happening um, was important and certainly something to really be thoughtful about. Um, they have a new strategic plan coming in 2023. And I, I, I also wanted to note in organizational excellence that they made a point of talking about um, paying attention to increasing staff salaries. Um, and, and I am delighted when organizations, this is a substantive organization with a large budget, but they're also talking about, we need to make sure our staff are fairly compensated and that perhaps our wages were low. And so putting those two things together, really thinking about what's happening in the museum and whose stories they're telling and who are telling them, and then ensuring that staff are appropriately paid, I think speaks well to the, the organization's, um, organization's excellence and hits the criteria there. Um, for the inclusion, diversity, equity, and access score, they refer to it as DEAI. So if I get those letters out of order, that's why. Um, I was heartened to see about their, their DEAI council um, and their new strategic plan includes the goals that this council has put together. So, and this council, it is not just people from the museum. This is part and parcel working with native communities, really understanding what those communities are doing, what they care about, what needs to be reflected and what goes on in the, in the organization. So I thought that was, uh, I was happy to see that. And their revised DEAI statement in 2021 seems very comprehensive. They know good data about who their audience is and how their audience is reflecting a higher percentage of both Blacks or African-American and Native American populations. And that's what you would hope for a museum like this, but it's, it was good to see that. Um, it was also good to see that they deliberately seek out artists, presenters, partners, and advisors who are coming from the communities that they are showcasing. And that feels like a shift for this museum. So I think that's a shift in a great way. When I looked at their Facebook page and they talked about a, a, a program coming up this weekend actually with a survivor of an internment camp, a Japanese American who survived a camp in World War II, that speaks to it isn't just what they're talking about with Native Americans and things that happen in the American West, but they're really talking about marginalized people generally and those, those things that happen. So I thought that was really terrific. I also appreciated in this section that they were also talking about accessibility. We did not forget the A in all of these things. And I think that's an important piece. Um, for artistic quality, uh, I think they did a fine job of explain, explaining how they th this collection came to be and how this collection is ranked among the best in the world. Um, I appreciated all the things that are going with that that include fellowships and the markets and festivals, um, artists and residents. I appreciated the detail about how artists and residents are sought out. They are not just standing there saying, come be an artist in residence. They are going places like the herd, like Santa Fe, to say, who are the artists we should be talking to? How do we get them in residence here? And then really thinking about what does it mean to be an artist in residence? Not only being at the, the top of your game for uh, the way you make your art, but also in communicating that and talking with people and working with children. So I was pleased to see that. That said, I would have loved to see a little bit more about the credentials of the kind of folks who are doing this work, even if those credentials are a, a distinguished elder in their community. I would have liked to have seen a little more of that to make me feel more confident about what the process looks like. Um, for community engagement, I thought the description of their engagement process was really well done when they were talking about how they were reworking their Native American galleries. Um, other organizations uh, go request this application and read the community engagement section. I think there was some really nice language here that talked about a real partnership. 
working together, not doing something to a community, but working together with a community. So uh, kudos to the organization for that. The humility that what that is required to do real community engagement was in evidence here. It is not in evidence in other applications. And I was pleased to see that in this particular organization. Um, they spent some time talking about evaluations, visit participate back as essential. Um, and they described not only that they do this stuff, but how things have changed as they read that feedback. They were talking very specifically about the Day of the Dead stuff and how they are changing that event, knowing that they've had some reasonable, um, they've had some feedback from the community that says that they should do those things. So all in all, I thought this was a, a very strong application. I'm pleased to see the changes in this museum over time and it makes me want to go there. Hey, thanks, Karen. Now I will open it up to the full panel. Additional comments on this application you'd like to share? Uh, I just have a comment here uh, about, uh, I think it's in the community engagement. Uh, where it talks about opportunities to involve the community in art making and installations, uh, I would recommend that uh, the, they reach out to a, to a broader uh, community in the sense that uh, involve Indiana as a whole. I think uh, it it felt to me that uh, it was not clear if they meant just like around Indianapolis or or uh, I would like to see something more broad. Um, the other recommendation that I have, I mean, I think. It, it, I, some of the things that uh, Karen mentioned are, uh, I agree completely, especially the uh, the voice of the community being there represented. I think that was wonderful. It, it just stood out when I read that. And uh, but one thing that I noticed the lack of uh, some statistical data uh, for a museum of that caliber, I would, I would expect a little more uh, uh, data in sort of the claims that they made. So. Um, so just a little more of that, I think would be very helpful um, to see exactly what they are accomplishing. Thanks. Any other comments, discussion on this application? All right. Seeing or hearing none, uh, I'll ask you to take a minute to update your scores and then uh, when you're done, just give me a thumbs up, actual, either digital or Actual, and we'll move on to the next application. All right. Our next application is the Evansville Museum of Arts, History, and Science. And Petronio, you are the reader on that application. I'm opening the application here in the, uh, the website. Okay, so uh, you can hear me. Okay, see that. Um, I thought the museum did a great job explaining its uh, multidisciplinary uh, status and uh, the types of project that they uh, they mentioned. I think it was well written. Uh, ex explain its capability to carry on uh, its mission. I think that was very good. That's in the organizational excellence component. Um, the uh, in the IDA, uh, the idea, IDEA uh, component here, uh, the efforts uh, that they are uh, going uh, through to include diverse equity and accessibility. Uh, I think they developed this statement in 2022. That was good to see that uh, there is actually, uh, uh, I think that was one of the, the, the few ones that actually had uh, uh, a statement written. So in fact, I think this is something good that for other organizations to think about that. I don't think I saw in any other uh, application uh, that level of commitment. Uh, the uh, the museum discussed about the, the different cultural uh, uh, initiatives, uh, for example, being more careful about uh, 
accessible for non-English uh, speaking uh, visitors and also uh, the education and cultural advancement for Latinos. I think uh, the engagement of those organizations I think was very positive. Um, in the artistic quality, uh, it's very uh, obvious that the museum has a qualified curatorial team, uh, very clearly described. Uh, and uh, it also talks about the, I think, nine exhibitions and, uh, and the two exhibitions uh, involves the mid-states art states craft exhibition that are competitive so they uh, clearly describes uh, those uh, components um as far as the community engagement part um the application uh did summarize uh well uh its uh, initiatives here and uh, there seems to be uh, an emphasis on the autistic community uh, and uh, and other uh, components, including the voice in action and the club program, which was, a, I think, very innovative project. So uh, it seems to me that the museum is really trying to um, to create opportunities for community engagement in uh, in the area. And that's the end of my comments. Great, thanks, Petronio. So. Let, I'll open it up to uh, the other panelists. Additional comments, observations on this application. I'll just add one thing, if I may. Um, I think under organizational excellence, you know, there are four parts to that question, right? Um, what do you do? Why is it important? How do you do it? And what's your financial situation? And I feel like there, the, the last two questions, C and D, you answered really, really clearly. Um, the first two questions, and especially the why is it important, I would have liked to seen to have seen a little bit more about purpose. Um, you 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 are a museum, but why does that matter? Say a little bit more about that uh, to really address that criteria. All right. Thank you, Karen. Peter, I saw you jump in. So I, I felt that what the organization had listed in the community engagement section felt like they were talking a great deal to one community. Um, and they briefly mentioned a wider range of communities that they're talking to. Um, I just wish they had discussed more specifically what they're doing to engage those other communities directly. Um, I thought that many of the programs mentioned in the last paragraph were mentioned earlier in the document. And I just felt like it would have been useful for them to explain their engagement efforts here in this context, since um, I was kind of interested in their methodology for collecting data from the communities they were serving. Great. Thank you, Peter. Other comments? All right. Seeing and hearing none, um, if you would finalize your scores. Maya, could I take a one minute break? You may. We're going to take a one minute break. So, You're right. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thank you, Maya. You are welcome. Welcome back. Uh, our next app is Fort Wayne of Art. Ruby, you are the that application. Thank you. So uh, let's see, for organizational excellence, um, the organization clearly outlines their purpose and the stated activities aligned with that purpose. I appreciate the focus on accessibility. Um, Despite their challenges resulting from the pandemic, they appear to have a clear understanding of the impact of funding changes and plans to mitigate and balance shortfalls. 
Continued commitment to service and keeping virtual programming as part of their ongoing strategy, I felt was really solid. Also appreciated how they wove in DEIA into this response. And I always want specificity when people say diverse. So what does that mean exactly? Is it age diversity, gender diversity, racial or identity, racial identity or ethnicity? Like, because to be more specific gives context to then how all of these strategies and who they're intended for and are they effective. So um, just that's always helpful. In the idea section, Again, I would have appreciated just more detail on how the organization is defining broad and diverse to understand more clearly the alignment of the efforts shared in the narrative. It would have given context to why Spanish language materials and supports are so important and why they're focused and so centered. Um, I do appreciate their clarity, though, on the tactics they're employing to support audiences. Um, I'm also curious about how this work is affecting them operationally in addition to the kind of external facing programmatic efforts. For artistic quality, I do want to commend them on sharing their uh, achievement of accreditation. It's clearly a strong measure of quality. Um, clear tactics around selection and programming decisions were evident, so I really appreciated that. But again, I would have liked to just see a little more information about how the um, DEIA efforts are taken into account. Relevance to community is an indicator, but in what regard? And is there guidance on that measure or what is it? And how does it relate then to their um, you know, commitment that they've stated? So kind of weaving that story throughout the narrative, I think would have just made it a, a much more compelling application. And then lastly, in community engagement, the organization employs advisory committees to provide input to guide decision making. The example of the Teen Council is a strong way to engage and activate participants in the co-creation of programming, building awareness, skill, and agency. And I also appreciated how they're using the learning to inform other programming. And again, I just would have liked to have seen a little more detail on the alignment of the tactics stated and how they relate then again to their idea commitment. Thank you. Thanks, Ruby. I'll open it up to the full panel. Other comments, observations from this application. All right, seeing and hearing none, I would ask you to finalize your scores. Okay, are we good? Fantastic. All right, we will move on to the next application. The Harrison Center for the Arts. Petronio, you are the reader for that. So when you're ready. Okay, set. Okay, <clears throat> so make sure I'm the, um, okay, the Harrison Center, very good. So um, my uh, observations here is that um, the organization's mission, mission is aligned with the activities and it offers uh, activities and resources to emerging artists, including studios. And I think that was well explained. Uh, and I mean, it's, uh, it's focused on professional development. And I especially like the discussion about uh, uh, the gentrification. I think I will get there in a minute. Um, they also talk about uh, their their monthly involvement with the with the audience, with the show and tell, uh, peer learning activities. That was uh, very good to see that type of engagement. Uh, is also talk about different uh, engagements with uh, 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 leaders in the POC community that was also very positive and well uh, described. The IDEA uh, component part, um, there is a demonstration of the commitment in moving uh, 
IDEA forward uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, and I that's what I was mentioned before. It says seeking strength in neighborhoods without gentrifying them. Uh, that was a very unique um, aspect of this application for me specifically, where they talk about the 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 implication that you can actually uh, develop a community, uh, and then of course the those marginalized uh, people ended up leaving the community, but they're trying to uh, have a different tactics, and that was incredible. I think this kind of approach sets an example for other associated believe to it. Um, I think it's set an example for others to follow. The uh, let me see here the the artist quality. Uh, I believe that it was well uh, described. Uh, the association lists accomplishments and awards, uh, and uh, it provides. Uh, I think it provides enough uh, information about that, uh, including the Indiana Governor's Arts Award and. Arts Council of Indianapolis, and uh, so I think those were well, um, and I believe that the organization does have an impressive record of excellence. Um, the community engagement uh, component, uh, and uh, I think that uh, was very nice to see the discussion about uh, quantitative and qualitative um, data collection. I think that was very clear uh was described the proposal um and uh, it states at the end that they believe that their partnerships are uh, mutually beneficial that was very nice um so yeah that's my re my report thank you Petronio. um other panelists feedback response to this go karen yeah uh, just two things to add to Petronio's great uh, summary uh, in the ID IDEA section I want to commend the organization for writing a narrative that actually described the journey and was honest about what worked and what didn't and what the organization has learned. This IDEA work doesn't always work the first time out, and they were really clear and honest about that. And so that is, I, I wanted to commend them for that. Um, and similarly, in the community engagement space, I appreciated very much the descriptions of how they use input and what happens when the input they get with their, from their community does not align with their mission and what they do about that, right? You collect, there's a, a saying, don't ask for feedback if you're not prepared to act on. And they got some and they weren't sure how it was aligned and they described that. And so that, that took some courage for them to put that in their application. That to me speaks well to the humility that comes with being really engaged in one's community. So just wanted to call that out with a cheers. Karen, other comments, Peter, jump in. I was really impressed at the organization's community engagement section as well, um, that they talked to neighbors and also artists um, and recognizing that the goals of our, their neighbors and their art and their artists might not always align um, in addition to the mission. Um, I think that uh, Karen just mentioned um, the idea that they would solicit feedback is a terrific thing, but to also encourage feedback through art making to me, um, as described in their theater project, um, as a way of the community having an outlet to respond to the organization, I think is really inspired and a really wonderful way of working within your own medium to solicit feedback. Other comments? Feedback on this application. All right. I would ask you to finalize your scores. Okay. Our next applicant is the Indiana Symphony Society. And Karen, you are the reader for that application. Okay. Thanks, Maya. Um, a couple of sort of general comments and then we'll get into the criteria. One of the things that you'll hear me say often here is that these the four different criteria and the way the narrative read, sometimes it felt like I was reading two different applications. Um, I, I think there's some really important work here happening around um, the idea work that they are doing, around the community engagement that they're doing. But in some of the way they're describing their work in other sections, it almost feels like, like maybe, maybe two people wrote it that didn't read the whole thing together or that they haven't pulled through some of those community engagement and IDEA, IDEA principles into other things. So what am I talking about? So under organizational excellence, as I'm reading through their comments, they, they're very clear about what they do, 
when they get into what their purpose is, they're talking about the ISO as an economic engine. If that's actually true, we need some more evidence if that's the argument that you're going to make. Is your purpose to be an economic engine or is your purpose to be a symphony orchestra that does what symphony orchestras do? I'm, I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. I wasn't sure about the comment about being a literal and artistic cornerstone of our city. I think I know what they mean because I know where they're physically located, but there's a, an ego in that statement that I'm not sure about and I'm not sure how that fits. Um, I did appreciate the detail about what the board is doing. They're undergoing a music director search right now, and they're very clear in saying that their candidates, only candidates that they're seriously looking at, are those who agree to, to prioritize their community engagement and com commitment to equity-centered values. I think that's great. How about your staff? How about your volunteers? Can we get some more detail there? Um, the, the Indianapolis Symphony made very clear about their financial situation being uh, difficult during COVID that they use some of their COVID relief funds to uh, to sort of wipe the slate clean. But I, I sense and and I sense that perhaps they are also rebuilding staff. Say more about that. Um, give us a little bit more detail there so we can see not just that you are a symphony orchestra and that makes you excellent, but answer all the questions in the criteria so that we have a, a really good sense of the organization and what it's doing. I also felt that the, the, they tried to be candid about their financial situation and I appreciate that, but the comments actually raised more questions than they answered for me, especially knowing that we are not seeing their financial statements. So the applicant needs to know that. Um, what I wanted to know most of all was how did their shortfall in fiscal year 22 inform their budgeting process for fiscal year 23? Is this an organization that's just hoping that we're going back to 2019 in the way things are going to operate? Or is this an organization that's taking into account the audience behaviors may be permanently different and we need to think about that. So I, I would just encourage them to be a little bit more specific there. Um, on the idea stuff, they really did describe a five-year journey and they call it DEIB, including belonging. And they talk about it as a platform on which the rest of their artistic endeavors are built. And I love to hear that. And I'm delighted to hear that they're part of the Catalyst Fund. And I'm delighted to hear that they're working with the Sphinx organization in their beyond representation work. They seem to be very clear eyed about where they are, about who their audience is, mostly white people, and what they need to do to sort of shift some of that stuff. They're also very clear in saying, we're gonna need some financial resources to make that happen. And again, I'd go back to, okay, so you, you talk about the financial challenges. I want some evidence here in this section that you're not going to throw this stuff over when you're in a financial crunch. And a sentence would have helped a panelist. That may, that, I have no idea if that's what you would do or not, but it would be helpful to thread those things through. Um, under the artistic quality question, um, I, I would take issue with the statement that symphony orchestras are a rare commodity in the United States, friends. Um, yes, there are not a lot of full-time symphony orchestras in the United States, but again, this is where I say it feels like some of the pieces don't hook together. If you think you're a rare commodity, how does that connect you to doing real and true community engagement with all kinds of groups that exist around Indianapolis Metro and around the county? Community orchestras, youth orchestras, you, you run one, I know that. But, but how do those things connect together when you, when you talk about yourself as a rare commodity? I'm not so sure about that. And that speaks to my overall concern about how these pieces get together. And, and for the, if there are symphony folks who are listening or listening back to this, um, what these kind of statements do is they introduce skepticism to the other sections of the application. So when you read a statement like that, now suddenly I'm a little more skeptical about your community engagement stuff than I was in a minute ago. So you might encourage somebody to give the whole thing a full read and watch for those things because you don't wanna inject skepticism. I don't wanna take away from the good work that I know you are doing, but I see these things here and it, it does give me certainly some concern. Um, artistic quality, obviously they work with the highest caliber artist. Um, they're doing all kinds of things beyond just what happens on the stage with their educational endeavors, with their youth orchestra. I would have loved to have heard in this section a little bit more about how the youth orchestra interacts with the ISU musicians, if it does. Uh, I think that's an un underutilized asset in you're describing some of this artistic work. And so I would have loved to have heard a little bit more about that, certainly. Um, and then for community engagement, it seems like they really are trying to engage target audiences in program design and selection. And for a symphony orchestra, that is huge. If that is actually happening, where there's some co-creation happening between target audiences and the programming department, kudos to you, because you don't see that very often. And I'm really interested in how that plays out. What does that look like? Give us a little bit more detail there. That's a big statement. 
Um, you are in a strategic planning year this year as you're also you know, searching for a new music director. Um, you're saying that you're talking about that through an equity lens. I would just to love to have a little bit more detail about that as we go along. But I also, especially in this community engagement section, appreciated the thread of DEIB that pulled through. Um, and you talked about discernment, you're doing a lot of listening and how that will inform future engagement work. And I think that's great. So overall, I think this is a, a solid application. I would encourage the organization to listen to these comments in the constructive, supportive nature that they are offered. I love symphony orchestras. I want you to succeed. Thanks. Thanks, Karen. Additional comments, observations from the panel. Yeah, Petronio. Yes, uh, in the, uh, let's see, I think it's the IDEA uh, uh, section. It talks about uh, a more equitable uh, hiring process, but no discussion was provided about the process itself. Um, I was wondering what do they mean by that? Uh, and I think there, there, there was room for that discussion. Um, and, uh, the they talk about let's see here um it's very impressed with the organization i mean this is i mean i was look at their uh, instagram actually and uh in their uh, their uh facebook um and they have an impressive i mean this is i mean on the side i'm not sure how we want to take this here but the organization has i mean forty thousand facebook friends thirteen thousand followers on instagram i would say uh put a little more effort because there's a lot of young people in the instagram uh, uh, Instagram community, and I would just uh, push a little more of that. This is just a suggestion uh, to to in terms of like social media, and uh, the um, so let's see. One thing that I really enjoyed uh, in the community engagement uh, part is that there seems to have a major plan uh, creatively to reach out to diverse community, uh, and that was good to see and to increase uh, racial equity within the organization. That's something that I commend. I thought it was really beautiful to read that uh, and the efforts. Thank you. Thanks, Petronio. Additional comments? Um, I, I want to underpin Karen's comments about some of the dissonance in the application. Um, and for me, it showed up in um, what felt like a very one-sided presentation um, because I struggled even in the community engagement to understand how the organization is perceiving the mutually beneficial nature of the work that they're doing. Everything felt very the benefit to the organization. And I think, you know, that kind of came through um, in some of the comments that I made, but I just want to add that specifically it hit a little harder in the community engagement where the question was specific around mutual beneficial, and it I just didn't feel like that was coming through. And, and that permeated in other areas across the narrative as well. Yes, Petronio. Uh, I just want to add one thing here that I actually missed uh, in the uh, in the organization excellence comment. Uh, I don't know how pertinent this is, but I mean, it mentions there that uh, it's educational program uh, uh, the educational project be focused it's a, uh, to uh, reflect the ISO goal of advancing racial equity at the orchestra. So in the past two years, there is this educational project refocusing this to uh, advance racial equity at the organization. Sorry for my confusion here, my summary. But uh, I think this would be really nice to see this goal uh, addressed in their mission statement. It seems to be a big, important goal in the past two years. The educational project refocused its educational programs to reflect this advancing racial equity and uh, I didn't see anything in the in the mission statement related to that. I think for the level of the organization, it would be really nice to see that. Great. Thank you, Petronio. Additional comments on this? Great. Thank you. Um, I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to finalize scores. All right, our next application is the Indianapolis Arts Center and Peter, you are the reader and um, whenever you're ready.
Thank you, Maya. Just toggling between screens. Um, <laughs> I need about five screens here, I think. Um, so I felt that the organization um, has a clear mission, clear goals, and it's on the upswing when it comes to um, revenue and program creation. Um, they seem to have established themselves as a clear benefit to artists and audiences they hope to reach, and they appear to be an invaluable member of the community, providing space and enriching experiences to the communities that surround them. Um, in the idea section, I talked about um, that the organization appeared to be making strides in the area. Um, they do have a largely white audience and serve a great deal of white patrons. Um, I appreciated that they were making efforts to reach those that they do not serve. Um, and I thought it was particularly impressive that they're not only collecting the data, but I think trying to figure out how to analyze and weaponize that data. I don't know if weaponize is the right word, but uh, they're trying to employ it in a, in a, in a meaningful way, which I thought was um, I thought was interesting. Um, in terms of artistic quality, it seemed that the quality of the artists that are being hired is high given the continued growth of the educational programs. I have some question about the vetting process of the artists and whether there are any attempts to ensure that those artists are co coming from a variety of aesthetic and experiential experiences um, or points of view. Um, and for community engagement, I appreciate that the organization was taking concrete steps to gather data from its community um, and to then develop programs and services that are a result of that. I was glad to see that the Hillside Arts Center had been opened in a neighborhood that is populated by predominantly owned Black businesses, although I did wonder um, if there were thoughts or some thinking around how they um, are contributing to gentrification in the neighborhood and what ways they might um, they might work to combat that. That was brought up in other applications, and I thought it was a really interesting thing to think about given the placement of their organization. So that's what I've got so far. Thank you, Peter. Uh, other comments, observations by the panel? Karen. Just a, a couple of additional comments or slightly, uh, slightly in a like different angle comments. Um, under organizational excellence, I would have loved if they had said more about the staff and the volunteers so that we could all understand how all the work they're describing was getting done. Um, and then in part D, when you're supposed to be talking about financial stuff, this is one that threw me for a loop a little bit. I'd, I'd ask that the, they consider being more specific. It sounds like everything is amazing as you read the first section here. And then they make a line. There's a line that says they are making great strides toward a balanced budget. So does that mean you're running a deficit? A little more information here, I think, would be helpful to the overall context. Um, and then the only other comment um, around the idea section, while I appreciate that their DEI committee is trying to weave the principles into their strategic plan, I had a hard time discerning what their long-term goal was, um, how that work has strengthened the organization, what might need to change as based on what they're learning. So again, a little bit more specificity here would be helpful to the reader. Thanks, Karen. Other comments, observations on this application? All right, seeing or hearing none, I would ask you to take a few and finalize your scores. Okay. Our next application for review is the Indianapolis Museum of Art, DBA Newfields. Uh, Ruby, you are the reader for that. So when you're ready. Damn, thank you. Ah, organizational excellence. Um, the applicant provided a very clear and detailed narrative, but I really struggled to see a distinct purpose in their response. I appreciated the thoughtfulness in their approach to stabilizing their leadership transition and the transparency in what caused it. Um, for the idea section, it's clear they have a commitment to idea, but I would have liked to have seen how this is affecting their frontline workers, their administrative staff, and staff that's not in the executive suite, especially given the focus on hiring that they present in the narrative. And then also, how is this translating to their external relationships? So in what ways are the welcoming of partner orgs advancing idea goals? Are they offering free or discounted access to spaces, providing expertise or services? How are they... Um, you know, kind of engaging in, in that. 
really been about for the, so the Aya goals, I guess what I was looking for. I also was looking for some definition in how they're, they're defining the A in access, um, because that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And then how does this show up in the rest of the work? I also appreciated their free ticket distribution, but Providing data on usage would have been would have made the response a little more compelling and then sharing of tactics or approaches that ensure that use to ensure that use of those tickets would have been more helpful as well in this section. For artistic quality, clearly there's a commitment to producing engaging and relevant work and staff engaged in um, the organizing is qualified. Overall, I think the approaches they share are multifaceted and targeted, but having more information in the narrative response about the how for all of the example, for all of the amazing examples um, that they share would have made it more compelling, specifically how they selected their guest curators, how they select their contracted artists. And when they say they're focused on um, increasing diversity among guests, what does that mean exactly? And then how are they approaching that so that all of it comes together and creates this really robust um, alignment and clear alignments across all of the work that they're doing of how they're operationalizing the, the commitments that they've stated um, kind of throughout their uh, application. And then for the community engagement section, um, I appreciated that they have an advisory community advisory committee, but I would have loved information about how those individuals are being selected or how they're being invited to participate and just a little more granular information about the, the group, like how big is it, you know, how many how many folks are participating. Um, I do want to say that I appreciate the invitational nature of their approach to community engagement. I am curious about participation rates and again, how the information is then being analyzed and processed. Um, I appreciate their use of regular evaluation methods. One example of how this feedback affects their programming or operational actions would have made the narrative even more compelling. So I think, you know, giving, giving some of the how underneath and some of the, um, you know, the why just would have added some richness to the application. Thank you, Ruby. Um, now we'll open it up to the full panel. Other additional observations or comments on this application? Karen. I just want to amplify a couple of things that Ruby said, especially around the sort of mutual benef mutually beneficial nature of some of the work they're doing around idea and around community engagement. Um, and forgive me if this sounds the least bit hard. Um, I had a problem with being serious, serious administrative mistake that led to the dismissal of their last executive director in this, as a tragedy in the same light as a global pandemic that killed millions of people and the murder of George Floyd in broad daylight by, uh, by uniformed police. I have a problem with describing it that way, partly because what it says to me is you are looking at yourself and you are not looking at your community. I'm not trying to wordsmith how the, the writer of this application put that together, but the, the thought that the, this was a serious problem, it led to a leadership change. I'm sure it was tumultuous for the organization, but that was something that came from the organization. It was a problem that they caused. And, and to think of trying to frame that in the context of these other sort of more global tragedies was really difficult to read. And it was difficult then not to apply that as I was reading the rest of the application because it made me think they weren't thinking about things that were mutually beneficial. Kind of goes back to comments I made earlier. When you make a statement like that in one part of an application, it, in, it infects the rest of your application to a certain extent. So, so I wanted to say on the record, I found that very difficult. I would highly encourage the organization to really think carefully about the analogies they are drawing and the things they are saying when they are describing something like that. And also then in the community engagement uh, section, I was glad to see all the things they're doing. I can see that this is a, a complete change of the way they are trying to approach their community. Um, but I would love to know more about, they say in the very beginning, something about, uh, let me get it, they are looking to build a beloved community. I don't know what that means. And in the section of community engagement, they're talking a lot more about evaluation than they are talking about building beloved community, mutually beneficial relationships, um, how the organization, the community are actually working together. So th there's no doubt in my mind that this is an organization that has turned itself around, that the trajectory is going in the direction that they're doing all they can. There were a couple of unforced errors in this application narrative that made it hard to, to really fit the pieces together. And I felt it important to put that on the record. 
So I'll stop there. Thanks, Karen. Additional comments, Peter. So a couple of things I um, appreciated um, about their community engagement um, that I just wanted to name. I appreciated their commitment to contracting businesses owned by marginalized communities as a way of bolstering the businesses um, around them through in increased engagement. Um, and I also appreciated that they were conducting off-site events um, where they were providing food to potential new participants to the organization. I think sometimes, particularly museum spaces can feel very, very um, distancing if it's not a space you know. And so I thought going out into the community and becoming part of the community outside of the physical space of the museum um, was a really smart strategy um, and way of engaging the community. All right, thanks, Peter. Petroni, it looked like you maybe had a comment. Yes, please. You're muted, friend, sorry. Sorry. Uh, in the IDA uh, section, um, I just want to say that I was particularly impressed by how fast they just, the institution uh, reacted, implemented uh, IDA-related training, uh, such as competency training with Pink Consulting, the hire of its first community engagement specialist, and also um, expanded partners uh, organization by underrepresented groups, uh, such as the Strand Solution Research and Resource Center, Women Fund, of Central Indiana, 100 Black Men, Art Mexicano, and also the Jewish uh, Federation of Great Indianapolis. So I was very excited to actually read that component of the uh, in, in the IDA uh, uh, comments. Thank you. Thanks, Petronio. Any additional comments, observations on this application? All right. I will give you a couple of minutes to finalize scores. Like we're good. All right, our next application is Music for All. And Peter, you are the reader on that and start when you're ready. Okay. Um, um, okay, so I am um, organizations provide music education for all, but whenever I see for all, I always wonder about the feasibility of it and what that specifically means. Um, and I know it's in the title, so um, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to come off harsh when I say that, but um, it does. Uh, that said, the org makes it clear its reasoning for wishing to bring music education and participation to students across Indiana. Um, it is responsible for an enormous number of events that bring communities together to celebrate and reward the work students are doing to learn. Um, in the ideas section. Um, they said that they operate with the awareness of the challenges facing many students in the Indianapolis public school system, but I guess I didn't really see any real tangible actions to make change. I wondered throughout about access financially to instruction and especially equipment. Um, I see communication and engagement, but this statement doesn't actually allow what's being done tangibly in those schools. Um, they do acknowledge there is much to be done. Um, I wondered if this was a communication issue or if this was an organization doing a lot of talking and assessing, um, but not figuring out the action plan um, for that. I just wanted to understand quantitatively how students in the Indianapolis public school system or rural students are participating more because of Music for All's work. Um, in artistic quality, um, it's clearly staffed by high qualified music education professionals who work together to create meaningful program programming. Um, they also importantly hired musicians to conduct their programming, a lifeline I would imagine for many working artists. Um, I'd like to see more quantitative quantitative evidence on how their educators have been diversified. It says that they've worked tremendously to diversify the teaching artists, which is excellent, but what are we talking about here numbers-wise? I think I kind of wanted to know. Um, and finally, in community engagement, I found this section to be somewhat brief, um, that they covered some areas of community engagement in other sections of the application. Um, I would be most interested in seeing how Music for All engages community they're not serving or are underserving. How do they assess what is needed for those schools or those young musicians? What are those obstacles? Um, the educational advisory team um, seems a very good thing to have, but I'm unclear about who makes up that team specifically. Are there folks on the committee who come from areas or districts who have little or that are struggling? 
Um, and perhaps the work is being done already, but I wonder if it could be elaborated upon more so here in this section. Great, thank you, Peter. Additional observations or comments by the panel? I just want to add um, in the artistic quality section when they talked about an advisory committee, having information about who that is, who they are, how they're selected, to what extent, to what means, to what end, um, for me would have drawn in a little bit more as well. And I um, concur with, uh, with Peter's um, assessment. All right. Thanks, Ruby. Additional comments? All right, hearing none, I'll give you a couple of minutes to finalize scores. Okay, our next application is uh, Percussive Art Society. And Karen, you are the reader, so when you're ready. All right. Um, so late breaking news for this organization. They had a flood in their museum in December, thanks to a water leak. And that sort of, that, that does um, trickle through, sorry, bad metaphor, the rest of their application, but they make a point of saying in their very clear narrative, they describe the impact of the water leak, both in programmatic and in financial terms. So what is this going to mean for them? What happens now that their museum is going to be closed? How is that going to, how's this museum without walls going to work? But they did a really good job of having to, I'm imagining scramble a bit when they wrote this application to really hit all the criteria in the organizational excellence space, but also tell us what they are. This is a service organization that's also a collecting institution, which makes it a little bit unique. So they're a museum as well as a service organization. And I'm just saying for the record, I'm really glad that none of your uh, historical instruments were damaged in the flood. So yay. And we all wish you well as you um, try to reimagine things. There, it seems that they are also using this, this terrible situation as a way to rethink some of their financial stuff. And they are seeing by getting out of their lease, this is going to give them financial help and strength that they weren't anticipating. So I was glad for that. And I, I hope to see uh, good things come out of this uh, not such a great situation. This is a small organization doing a lot of stuff. Um, when I look at their moving on to their idea section, I was pleased to see that they really... Uh, uh, addressed at all the aspects of the criteria. So it was I-D-E-N-A, and they talked about how that happened in their conference, in their programming, how folks are chosen, what happens in their museum. Um, they have described a journey from a diversity committee that was put together starting in 2016, and how now they are working all of that stuff into their strategic plan in, a, in an important way. And then they were specific about saying they have a local audience as well as their national and international audience, and how they dealt with idea in their local audience, I thought was certainly well said. Um, under artistic quality, I appreciated the detail on how they define quality, um, the competitive jury process. This is percussion. So sometimes it's a drummer for a rock band and sometimes it's a percussionist in a symphony orchestra and they are using peers to judge quality based on those, the different aspects of the genre. I was pleased to see that. They have 16 different committees representing the breadth of percussion. And that speaks to, okay, we're really trying to make sure that we are insisting on a level of quality that is appropriate to the kind of, of uh, genre that we are describing. Um, they talk about an IMLS grant here. Um, and I think anybody who's around museums knows those are hard to get. So kudos for you on being able to do that. Um, I appreciated the detail about how at their conference, artists are, are selected by a jury of their peers. And I didn't know they had a touring drum head from the Beatles here in Indianapolis, who knew? So that was sort of a fun little tidbit to read. Um, in community engagement, uh, knowing that they were gonna really take a good hard look at their school programs back in 2020 and use their IMLS grant to do it, to really do some listening and learning and think about what they could do differently, I thought was great. I appreciated hearing about their partnership with a local community center and what that has meant for how things are changing for them. Um, or I appreciate that they're also partnering with both Music for All, who's an applicant here, and with Drum Corps International, so that we that they're not an island, that they are doing this service work for the national international community, but they're really working um, with the local organizations doing similar stuff to ensure that that uh, their work is has the most reach it can have. So 
Um, kudos to this organization. It's not a big organization and I thought it was a darn good application for uh, an organization with a small staff. Thanks, Karen. Additional observations, comments by panelists. Yes, Petronio. I just like to add that uh, this organization does provide uh, a diversity statement and that was very nice. I really appreciate that. And I don't think no other, no other organization uh, uh, provided one specifically. Uh, so I think it was very nice to, to see that in the application. Right, thank you. Any additional observations or comments by the panel? Um, I just want to call up there that I was um, really resonated with their family pass concept um, because it provided a deepening uh, approach versus a here's a free ticket. Um, and also the alignment between providing Spanish language materials um, because of the specificity that they gave about the Latin community um, as it relates to making that, you know, so that it gave context, it gave purpose, it gave intent, which just made it feel, um, you know, really authentic. So I wanted to call that up as well. Thank you, Ruby. Yes, Petronio. Uh, this is just a suggestion for the uh, organization because uh, it is it is about uh, the uh, activities for discuss their artistic uh, quality, their merits. Um, I would like to see a little bit more metrics in this area, a little bit, a little more specificity. I think it became very anecdotal, and uh, I didn't find. Uh, I mean, just a suggest for them to strain a uh, public case. Thank you. Additional comments? Yes, Peter. I had a little bit of a question in the idea section about um, the staff and um, how they practically seek to diversify their staff within the organization. Um, I don't think I was making a connection. I was just trying to go back through and see if I could see it. Um, I just thought that it appeared that it was on their radar, but I didn't understand how the goals would be implemented and measured um, um, and by when they'll, like if there's a target date for any of this, I just wondered if there could be more tangible goals in that regard. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Bearing in mind that they have a really little staff, right? Like I think there are seven full-timers. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I was looking for that in the, how many? Yeah. Were talking about. Thank you, Karen. Additional comments, observations. All right, seeing none, and I'll give you a couple to finalize your scores. All right, we will move on to the next application, the South Bend Museum of Art and Petronio, whenever you're ready. Sorry. Okay, good. So the, I think the organization, uh, I mean, described itself uh, as a cultural landmark in South Bend and neighboring counties. Uh, and it seems to have a broad program and features well-known artists. Uh, one not noteworthy uh, aspect here is the undergraduate college residency program uh, described uh, in the proposal, um, in the IDEA section, uh, it talks about uh, some upcoming uh, initiatives uh, or things in, uh, ongoing. So including the community-based advisory board to help pinpoint and meet uh, what they describe as DEIA goals. Um, and, uh, and there seems to be a goal, I mean, an, uh, an interest to develop the, what they call actionable plan for the upcoming year. So it seems to be that there is uh, there is a sense of awareness in their uh, in their uh, group uh, trying to um, 
to move forward and uh, make improvements in this area. So it felt to me it's a, it's a work in progress and it was nice to read that. Um, in their artistic uh, quality comments, um, the museum does seems to have a professional curatorial team and is working uh, and has several opportunities for the community to engage with the museum uh, and also uh, exhibitions and like that. Um, and this seems to have this incredible opportunity for, uh, I mean, courses that they offer. Uh, so that was well defined in their artistic uh, comment. Uh, there's something about the open door curatorial department policy, and they went through those details. Uh, also, uh, another, uh, uh, S, let's see here if I can see the, I'm just going through my notes here. Uh, in the community engagement, uh, uh, it lists that uh, a major goal for the 2023 uh, is uh, is to get more uh, participation with the community events, and uh, in addition to offering spaces to community partners for exhibitions, events, and programs. Um, I thought the 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 proposal the the whole proposal was um, it lacks a little bit of depth. I mean that's my general sense. Um, I I didn't get a sense of like uh, I was learning enough. Um, so just like a little bit more uh, description, a little bit more. Um, I mean it would be very helpful. Great, thank you, Petronio. Additional observations or comments on this application. Go, Karen. Yeah, I, I would just echo everything Petronio said about a little more depth would really make this better. Um, I would though call out, <coughs> I'm sorry, getting over COVID. <coughs> The Around the Bend initiative they described in community engagement sounded great. <laughs> it's water, girl. Okay. All right. Additional additional comments, observations. All right. Uh, seeing none, uh, take uh, a minute or two to finalize your scores, and we are going to take a quick break. Uh, for about three minutes, three or four minutes. So we'll reconvene at, um, can't do my math, uh, 11, uh, 11, 16, uh, for everyone to get some water and take a moment. So we'll see you back at 11, 16, folks.
Okay, welcome back to our panelists. Uh, we will pick up with the next application, uh, the Center for the Performing Arts. And Peter, you are the reader for that application. Okay, great. Center for the Performing Arts. Okay, great. Um, Uh, so this um, is a sprawling organization um, that seems to have its own programming that is exclusive of but programmatically connected to the performers and shows that come through. Um, I was a little bit confused about how the organization works as I was reading it because it does feel like this large umbrella organization that also that brings shows through but also has their own program. So I was just kind of trying to wrap my brain around that. Um, they appear to be well organized and well funded due to sound financial stewardship. Um, they thrive to meet a wide variety of audiences, at least in terms of age, and it would seem that they, given their success, that they're finding what audiences want to engage with. I think that what I was missing was what guides the organization philosophically, and for me, that was something that um, I couldn't quite um, get a grip on as I was um, reading. In the idea section, I thought that they strongly met the criteria here. I appreciate that they openly acknowledge the work that they've done thus far um, and that it's been transactional rather than transformational. I thought that was a really wonderful thing to actually name in the application. Um, they do seem to be going undergo uh, undergoing training at all levels. Um, and I think the thing that kept me a little bit from feeling completely connected to the application was that the language felt very institutional here, like it was checking um, some boxes. I just sort of wanted to hear more about their philosophy, how it shifted specifically, and how they might bring that to their programming. Um, um, in terms of artistic quality, um, I wasn't, again, sure what the guiding principles of programming are. Um, the goal seems to be diverse, diversity of programming, since there is a wide variety of types of shows that are made. Um, because they're a hosting venue, I wonder the degree to which the organization can really control the content that comes through, or if that falls outside the purview of their decision making. Um, they appear to get big name acts, but I'd like to understand the vetting process for these acts if there is one. Um, if it's not just ticket driven, right? That's 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 what I'm wondering about. Um, and much of the community engagement section talks about their Prism project, um, Prism project, an admirable project. I'm just not sure though how they assess the needs of the disability community. Um, they also discuss a new works commission program, also admirable, but I'm not sure how they're assessing the needs of the artists in the area. Um, as a playwright myself, commissions can be terrific, but it also takes a writer away from the work they would do without having to serve the organization. Um, that said, perhaps this community wants something else other than what I want. So I just want to know, though, how that's measured um, within the community of artists. So that's what I've got for this work. Thank you, Peter. Additional observations or comments by the panel? Petronio. Uh, I just enjoyed reading the, uh, I mean, I think in other applications as well, when they discuss more specifically the demographics and I think this application is very strong because it talks about uh, numbers here. It's mentioned that uh, in the Hamilton uh, counties, uh, uh, the, the change in demographics with this added 73,000 residents in which 46% are uh, represent of POC. So I thought it was very nice that they're, you know, I like when I see these in other applications as well. I just want to pinpoint uh, this. And uh, also, I appreciate their uh, IDA uh, forward thinking, uh, which includes engagement with the Midwest Academy, P Flag, Indiana, and also the Prism Project. So I think these are remarkable initiatives. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Petronio. Additional comments, Karen. Yeah, um, in the organizational excellence, I was glad to see them call out the fact that they provide um, a host, uh, a rent rent free hosting for smaller resident companies. That's a great service to the community, but I think it also speaks to the fact that there's so much government funding that helps fund the Carmel Center, and that's great. I think it's wonderful that that community has said we should have this kind of a performing arts center here that is is broad and includes lots of things, and so they should be providing um, rent to smaller companies. And I was glad to see that. I think just to echo a little bit the, the comments about um, community engagement, 
Uh, on the one hand, I'm so pleased to see the variety of things that they're doing. It is getting to be a challenging time in Indiana to be doing anything LGBTQ plus ish. And so they are uh, leaning into that and I'm glad for them that they are. Um, knowing that they are funded with public funds, I would love to see just more detail, more depth on, on how this is a mutually beneficial uh, set of work, that this isn't just being done one way to a community, but really that the community's voices are at the table, so. Thanks, Karen. Ruby, did you have a comment you wanted to add? I was just gonna add, I think for me, the, the how and the why um, could have come through more strongly. And I, I did also struggle kind of with, well, not kind of with, but I, th I, I did also struggle with the mutually beneficial response. Um, so I think just kind of examining more how to frame that out and, and, you know, ensure that things align. I'm a big fan of data too, but I didn't really get anything, you know, like if you say something, then it has to be, give context to something else. And so great, you've got, you know, an increase in, in people in your community, but what does that mean? And, and how is that calibrating your decision-making, your outreach efforts, your, how does that balance against then any specificity that you then share in your artistic goals, your um, idea goals, your, so, it, you know, for me, that data doesn't really mean anything if it doesn't have context and alignment to the strategies, the tactics, the focus, the goals, the, so it has to have purpose. And I, I, I just, I, yeah, I won't. No. Yeah. Thanks, Ruby. Additional uh, comments or observations? All right, uh, hearing none, uh, give you a couple of minutes to finalize scores. All right, our next application is the Honeywell Foundation. And Ruby, you are the reader for that. So when you're ready. Got a few windows open. Um, so organizational excellence. The organization clearly has a strong track record of understanding its community, providing a broad range of entry points and experiences for audiences. The narrative, while strong and detailed, would have been a bit more compelling with the inclusion of data or examples. <laughs> Um, uh, rule and homogenous does infer some assumptions, but clarity um, then provides us understanding um, of maybe, you know, are there other, how that indicate those indicators are affecting their approaches, but also are there other indicators that um, are, you know, can't be inferred from rule and homogenous that might also be informing their approaches. Um, and I think specific to this section of the application, that would have been helpful information to have. For IDEA, the ability to place individuals with disabilities in your workforce is a really strong example of meeting a community need. In the narrative, they say diverse without specificity, and it would be helpful to have context about who that is or maybe beyond the disability community. Um, and I also wanna just give them a positive call out for their full com comprehensive IDEA trainings. Um, I also appreciated the example shared and the path that the program took from funded to sustainability. I'm curious of the Latin a population as a whole in the area to give better context to the reach of the program. And they cite being able to lead difficult conversations in the community, but the examples are centered around programming. So perhaps including additional detail would give depth to the demonstration of idea work as DNA and not just an end to a mean. For artistic quality, I'm curious by what measure are new co-promotion partners being identified, especially as it relates to idea or alignment of intention and purpose for the organization. I'm curious about how the teaching artists are selected and do they align with the demography or identities in the schools that they're assigned to. Um, and they did spend some time in this narrative talking about their arts education programming and focus, but not as much on the broader artistic programming. So how are they selecting performances or presentations for different venues? Who's handling that process? How is the process organized? What is the evaluation process? So a lot of how questions. And for community engagement, how the community feedback is informing their idea work would have made the narrative more compelling or examples of the survey responses. Um, so while the movie selection example was really interesting, there was no insight into how the available list of movies to choose from was initiated. And are there ways for community members not on social media to participate? So the, the, the response just felt a little disconnected. 
I'm also not clear on the mutual benefit of the commu community um, arts example as it relates to the Imagine 185. So maybe ensuring that there's enough context to support the example and draw clear alignments in the narrative response. Um, and, and there just wasn't, uh, there was additional detail, but it didn't draw direct alignment. So I think it was just kind of difficult to connect the dots on my own. Um, and then just a little nitpicky note, and I would say this for um, all applications, when you're talking about a specific community, be consistent in how you're referring to that community. Um, the, the Latin A community is referred to in three different ways across the application. Um, and I'm not using that term myself as a person of uh, Mexican lineage. Um, so just making sure that the terminology aligns with how the community refers to itself and then being really consistent in how you're utilizing that language. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. Um, additional observations or comments on this application. Peter? I had a, um, a hard time understanding the what the sort of guiding kind of philosophy of the organization is. If it feels like a collection of disparate um venues and i'm so curious how these venues came to be honeywell and kind of what what they're doing to kind of tie all of this together in a very in a mission driven way um it feels just very general to me um and i i kind of want them to sort of beef up or articulate their philosophy as an organization a little bit more in the application so that I can get a grip on what they want um, moving forward. All right, thank you, Peter. Additional comments? All right, hearing none, I will ask the panelists to take a minute to finalize scores. like everyone's done. So I want that conclude that that was our final application. So I want to thank our panelists for their time and the great review and discussion. Um, and to let those that are observing that this concludes the FY24 Arts Organization Support Advisory Re Review. Uh, applicants will be notified of the status of their grant following the June quarterly business meeting of the Indiana Arts Commission. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, have a great afternoon.